Welcome back then folks to the second build of day four of special projects pack number eight and this one some of you should recognize because of course I've technically done this one before and I think it was in the last game I think I did this build in GT Sport but I called it a different thing and the tune level was different because I called it back then the Porsche Taycan RS and the whole idea was like what if they made a like 911 GT3 style build for the Taycan now I'm taking that to the next level because you can do even more in terms of, for example, dropping the weight in this game and also just the physics changes, etc. I decided to reimagine the same concept, but instead of calling it the RS, I'm calling it the R+. And the idea behind this one now, which again is slightly different to back then, is that this one is designed to directly take on something like a Tesla Plaid. Those kind of top tier electric performance cars or even full-on electric supercars like a Nürburgring spec track focus Taycan but obviously being an electric vehicle there's only so much you can do in terms of tuning unfortunately so you're stuck with 800 horsepower I mean oh being stuck with 800 horsepower is the worst thing in the world but you know what I mean thankfully you can drop the weight by quite a bit of course the weight is not realistic in the slightest because there's no way you'd make a Taycan this light without completely stripping everything out of it basically being a rolling shell because the batteries are just so heavy on electric cars. But if you do decide to give it a try, I would recommend having the Stage 1 weight. I don't recall, we'll be able to check in just a second, in fact we can check now. Yeah, I've got a fully customised computer so you don't need to bother with the sports one. The Stage 1 weight you will definitely want though, of course. For the tyres we've got Sports Hard, Sports Soft, I fitted a number of different ones. You'll see in a minute I had some racing tyres on it as well. So fit whatever you want. I wanted it to feel a bit more realistic and have kind of a workable point level, so I've left it on sports hards. It shows you, you know, a more accurate picture of what it's going to actually handle like without overpowered tyres. As far as the club sports section, we've got the power restrictor, stage 2 weight, of course, and the ballast as well. We're not actually using the ballast, though. As far as the semi-race, like I said, we've got the fully customised computer, the stage 3 weight, don't really need to bother, uh, bother even with the body rigidity. For the racing stuff, we've got the sports pads. Probably not too surprisingly, I've opted to go for the carbon ceramic discs, mostly for the looks. It's more of a supercar kind of build, so I wanted to go for that kind of look. We've got the fully customised suspension. Unfortunately, you really can't do anything about the actual ratios, which is one way that I will say Forza definitely has an advantage over Gran Turismo when it comes to this car, because you actually can get a lot more control out of the Taycan. It's still unrealistic, but having transmission control and adding ratios to it is quite fun. We've got stage 4 weight, of course, and since actually I'm thinking back, this has stage 5 weight. So I think you can actually skip that, can't you? If you just buy stage 5, I think it actually cancels out all of the others, if I recall correctly. So the racing hard tyres I do have, like I said, but we're not actually using them for this run. Like I said, carbon ceramics are fitted, and I have fitted both the steering angle adapter, because this car is very prone to understeer, and the hydraulic handbrake as well, just for when you need to pull it. It's a, a bit better than the standard handbrake in terms of manoeuvrability. And like I said there, the stage 5 weight, which now that I recall, I think does cancel out all four of the previous stages, so you can just skip to that one. Now, as far as the visuals, of course I put on screen that you can add this one to your library from the description below. As far as the actual tuning though, of course it's an EV, so there's not a huge amount you can do to it. Unfortunately, the lack of control that we have over stuff like the diff, for example, makes a massive difference. If you could tune the diff on this car, I think it would make it so much better. And as it happens, it is very quick, but you can feel that there's more to give. It's kind of an annoying car, actually, in that way, because Gran Turismo really doesn't give much love to EVs. They feature them, but they don't really give you much control over what you can do with them. You know, they're, they're useless in any race that requires pitting in. You can't really affect the power that much, if at all. The weight is good, I guess, but that's about the only thing they give it, you know, in terms of love. And you can't really do enough with the actual specs, transmission, diff, to make them feel better. And of course, that's partially because of how EVs work, but still, you can, you know, in a game with a 400 mile an hour Tomahawk, you could make some exceptions here and there. But as far as the actual tuning goes, we've got the sports hards fitted. As far as the suspension, a slight difference between the front and the back with 63 and 68, 4 on anti roll, 30 on the compression for the dampers, 40 on the rebound, 2.55 for the springs. I've opted to have kind of a drift approach. In fact, a very drift approach if you compare it to what I'd usually do for a track car. 
Two degrees on the front, none on the back at all. And then as far as the toe, again, very much so like a drift car, we've towed out the rear by 0.5 and towed in the front by 0.15. So on a normal car, four-wheel drive or otherwise, that would start to make it extremely unstable. On this car, it kind of just about makes it workable because it's so heavy through corners and because of the lack of diff, you just cannot do too much about that, unfortunately. As far as the transmission, like I said, you can't do anything about that either. Of course, we don't have any ballast. The power restrictor and the ECU are naturally untouched. The downforce is not adjustable on the front, at least with the aero that I'm running. On the rear, I've got it as high as possible. As far as the rest, you can just see the very basic stuff that we had fitted already. And with all of that said and done, you can see, at least on sports tires, it's 641 points, which is quite modest. Uh, at least for an 800 horsepower car that weighs less than 1600 kilos and has the four-wheel drive advantage as well, so pretty good, at least on paper. But on the track, we'll be able to see what it can do in practice. This one, in a similar way to the HKS drag car, is more of a novelty build. In the game, it just feels kind of hampered, like it has tremendous power, the weight is a lot better now that you drop it, it looks great, it certainly has everything that you would want from a cool electric car. But then when you actually put it all into practice around a track, my recommendation for using this one, even with such heavy-handed tow and camber, you have to brake a lot earlier than you think, because for some reason the brakes are surprisingly weak on this car, even with the carbon ceramics, and the weight is not that bad. You know, 1600 kilos is not that heavy anymore. And then when you turn through the corner, you pretty much have to pile on the power as you exit, almost like a front-wheel drive car with 800 horsepower, because it just gets so heavy. And the awkward thing about using the car with tuning or otherwise, is that you have this natural inclination to start rolling on the power mid-corner. Because in a normal car, you know, supercar or otherwise, you can start to do that. As soon as you start to do that in this car, it just gets so heavy and starts to pull itself out off of the track. And it's quite annoying to get used to. But once you do, make no mistake, it is definitely a weapon. It's just a shame that Gran Turismo doesn't give EVs the kind of maneuverability they should have in terms of tuning and setups and even, you know, events for a start it makes the incredible Volkswagen IDR next to useless in the game, which is a shame. But if you do have a Taycan, if you're doing nothing with it and you're fancy, just having a bit of fun, something that's a bit different, give it a try. You can certainly feel the, the bones of a car that could be even better. So if you do decide to use it, I hope you find it fun. Maybe, like I said, if you've got a Taycan that you're not using. And of course, stick around for tomorrow, where already we're getting to the last two builds of special projects pack number eight. So of course, check out the ones which I've already done this week. And of course, I hope you enjoy this one. But for now, thanks for watching.